how does the technical aspect come into this? Is that a big differentiator when it comes to podcasting? Is like audio quality, do you have to have like super crisp audio quality or is it mainly the content? It's the content. There's one misconception that we try to, to really coach for. It's not about the polish or the microphones or whatever yeah. it might be. Yeah. It's about getting started. And if you have a content vision and you're delivering true value, something that somebody, they wouldn't have got that knowledge if they hadn't been listening to that show. That is the unlock. That was such a light bulb for us because we have so many customers we've talked to since then. You know, they ask us, do we need to go hire a producer? Do we need to go work with whatever this might be? And yes, those are things that can optimize your show. And maybe when you hit a certain level of scale, maybe it's worth the investment. But the key thing is finding, does this content fit your audience, right? And you can do that from your phone potentially. You can do that from tools you're already using. It's it's truly that easy. The most critical thing I've learned from listening to really successful podcasts is that it's about frequency and it's about yeah. vision. It's about being yeah. able to build an audience that's like every week I'm going to get something out of this and there's really something that they're getting. And if you can do those two things and do it for an extended period of time, you have a shot to be very successful is what I, what yeah. I believe. Welcome to Making Better a podcast from Better Everyday Studios, where we dive into the science and art of making individuals, teams, and organizations better. Whether you are a learning leader, an instructional designer, or a trainer, this show will give you practical lessons to drive positive change in others. Let's get started. Okay, and we're live. JP, how's it going? How are you doing today? Thank you so much for being here. Matt, it is awesome. I am very glad to be here. So thank you so much for the invitation. Absolutely. Um, We're getting a little bit meta today where we're talking about podcasts on a podcast. Um, As you as you probably know, because, yeah, I've, I've mentioned it to you before podcasts are near and dear to my heart i've been in uh i've been listening to podcasts for for years i i they, i was watch i was listening to them way before i realized how cool and amazing they were but if anyone can say they are closer to their heart than me it's you because you decided to start a whole company around podcasting um so i'd love for you to give you know a couple minute intro of your of yourself and and when why we're talking yeah i do always feel a kinship with fellow audio people and and folks who nerd out about it but Uh, Thanks for the lead in, Matt. My name is JP Gooderham. I'm the CEO and founder of Storyboard. If you're not familiar with Storyboard, we are an enterprise podcasting and audio platform. So we like to think of ourselves as a podcast app for your office or for your workplace. And so many of us are probably very familiar with podcasting. We help companies actually launch podcasts that they can use for training, communications, day-to-day operations, and much, much more. Uh, but to actually answer your question, as I mentioned, my name is JP. I live in Santa Monica, California, uh, but I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, so I can really appreciate that it's like 70 degrees outside right now, and I'm glad to be here. <laughs> it's been so cold in California. It's like it's it's it doesn't get up into the 60s right now, and it's so frustrating. <laughs> you know what, Matt? No one has any sympathy. I've I've learned this from talking to folks on our team who are in the Northeast, and there's zero sympathy for that. So I try to keep that to myself. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So yeah, so podcasts, but but corporate internal podcasts. I know, I know for me, I'm sure this will come up later. You know, when I say, I, I think podcasts are really powerful inside of companies, but everybody thinks like, well, won't everybody be able to listen to it? Or they're, they're always thinking of Spotify. Um, but, but before we get there, you know, so you chose to start a business around podcasts, so you obviously, you know, think this is really important. What, why do you think this is so powerful right now? Why are they so popular? So our journey goes back to late 2019. I worked at Google for close to seven years. And Google, I think, is a, like a lot of big companies, right, where I love the people I worked with. I really enjoyed the projects I was working on. But it felt like on a day-to-day basis that a lot of my time was spent at a desk looking at a computer. And this was even pre-COVID, Right. So you're sitting there, you're on video calls, you're on video meetings, and it felt really passive. And meanwhile, in my personal life, I've always, much like yourself, Matt, I love podcasting. I think that getting, whether it's knowledge, like somebody listening to a business podcast where you learn something, whether it's entertainment, I'm a huge college football fan, and I just enjoy hearing someone go in depth about the TCU versus Georgia game or whatever it is. Like That stuff has always connected with me. And I think you asked, and no one really has asked me this question before, like, why does podcasting matter? And I think one of the things that I've I've always kind of turned to is that 
we increasingly live in an on-demand culture. And I think that's the thing that I love about podcasting versus, say, yes. Yes. radio or Sirius or something like that is that it's at your fingertips and it's instant. And then second, I don't have to be in the car. I mean, I anyone who knows me knows I love taking a walk. Like that for me is like how I love to break up my day uh, or end a work day. So being able to just kind of zone in for a second uh, while, you know, learning about something or taking in something that I care about, that's something I've appreciated. And apparently other people do as well because as we've seen, podcasting year over year has been growing and growing and growing basically ever since Serial broke things open in the consumer market, if that makes some sense. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's right. Yeah. And I think you hit on the two things that I think are most critical. It's like podcasting at once is both asynchronous, which is great. You can do it on your own time and it's disconnected. You can do it anywhere, you know, and so having those two things be true, I definitely think um, makes it makes it super popular. Um, you know, so when it comes, when you're talking, because it's kind of what we, what we were just talking about a second ago, when it comes to thinking about podcasting in a company, you know, when you're approaching organizations, what are, are, are there common misperceptions around it? Or, you know, is there, is there a lot of like, um, customer, uh, education that, that you need to do around, around the medium? Well, Matt, you nailed a big one, which is that when most of us have familiarity with podcasting, what do we think of? We think of audio, which is good. I think podcasting is inherently an audio medium, which I'm sure we'll talk about, you know, what does audio do for people? What What's different about that versus building a training or another piece of content around video or text or whatever else? So there's an audio element and there's an on-demand element. And a lot of people tend to understand those two things. The biggest misconception, though, is that it has to be public. And that's because that's what podcasting has been for so many of us, is that we go to Apple or we go to Spotify or wherever, and that's where we find The Daily or Joe Rogan or whatever, insert the podcast of one's choosing. And so back in 2019, when we started this company, the truth was that really was the way podcasting was set up. It was kind of inherently built around reaching the biggest audience that you could. And when I had that sort of light bulb moment when I was working at a big company, I was like, well, what if I could do a podcast, but do it for 10 people, right? And the goal is not to get it out to a million people and sell ads for, remember, Blue Apron and HelloFresh and those companies are always <laughs> yeah. pitching food boxes. You know, that was the goal for most podcasters is they want to go really wide, right? They want to get the biggest possible audience. And I actually was thinking about the opposite of that. I wanted to go really deep for a very narrow audience, which was that I had a team I was working with. Uh, for anyone who's lived in the Bay Area in Northern California, traffic is abysmal. And so we had people who were commuting in every single day for an hour or more on a bus. And I was thinking if I could just record something and share it with them privately, which is the word that, that I always go back to that I could share it with them in a private, secure way, there could be some real magic there because then somebody could listen to a training. They could listen to, we did this weekly stand-up meeting. They could check it out while they were actually on the bus. And I thought, well, maybe people could spend some more time with their kids dropping them off at school. They could use that time to talk to a customer. It would unlock many doors. And that's the thing that I always underline, especially for folks in the corporate space, is that the important thing isn't reaching everyone. It's you know, there are now solutions like Storyboard where you actually can focus on really connecting with 10 people on your team or 100 people or 1,000 people. It doesn't need to be the entire world because we have platforms that are built to exist uh, within your specific company, if that makes some sense. Absolutely. So then, you know, since you mentioned those, you know, uh, you know, sharing a meeting or sharing a recording, I imagine there's some people that are, you know, well, well, we do that already. You know, we, we, what, what's different? What do you think is different between like having an intentional, like we're going to have a podcast versus let's just send out the meeting, the zoom recording link. Like, like what's, what's the difference there? This was a bit of an existential question for us to an extent, because if you think, <laughs> you know, if I run this back, I mentioned that we started in late 2019, our company grew up in the age of the pandemic, right? A really four months yeah. in the storyboard the world changed as we knew it in a way that no one could have anticipated. And so we were confronted with this question very early, which is that there are lots of ways to record things. And so we heard from if you're a Microsoft company or you're a whatever type of company, there are many companies that we started to hear from who the first instinct they had was, 
well, okay, people are at home. We can't get them into one location anymore because they're distributed. Uh, some are working from the office, some are working from home, whatever the case may be. So what we'll do to make sure everyone stays connected is we'll record everything and we'll put it in a folder and then people can find it. And they learned a couple of things. The first thing was it's not a very easy way for people to find content, right? So you had these folders yes. with these huge videos and videos, as we all know, anyone who's downloaded them uh, are quite large as a file size, even something as basic as that. And so it was this big barrier to entry for a lot of your potential audience. And so people weren't necessarily coming back in, in finding it. And the second thing was, you know, with a podcast, you know, we were talking Matt and I about some of our favorite podcasts and things that we like to listen to. You can go and search. You can go find, you know, whether it's a guest or the topic or whatever it may be. That orientation of a podcast feed where it's not just one thing. It's that you have a series of shows about different topics and areas that's powerful, right? And these folders that these companies started to build were really lacking that. And they also didn't really have any mm. way to market new great stuff. They couldn't give me a push notification and tell me that there's something I should check out. And that's why it was important for us to start building a platform that could do all three of those things. It could be a, a house to be able to actually store that content. It could do it in a way that was listener friendly because people could use very small files that they could even access from their phone on the go like we were talking about before and that we could start to offer marketing in the form of things like push notifications to let new users find out about it. And that was the light bulb moment for a lot of our earlier customers where they were like, sure, you know, we could try to just put all this stuff in a folder, but if people aren't finding value in it, it's a waste of everyone's time if that resonates. Yeah, I think so. And so, you know, if I'm if I'm hearing you right, you know, when it talks about this, we're kind of talking about like the barriers to entry or like the or the challenges that that a company is going to face with this stuff, you know, um, sharing content, I, I guess all forms of content, you know, and especially in the learning space, anybody that's ever tried to launch a course on the LMS knows, you know, it's if you build it, they will come just it couldn't be farther from the truth. Nobody's going to find it. And it's and it's all about that shareability and discoverability. It sounds like that's a big one of the barriers that that you're talking about with this stuff is is that is that element of it is how easily easy is it to find and share the content once it's created. Oh, I, right? I think that framing is exactly right. And it's one of the things that I would say that that back in 2019, 2020, at least me personally, I don't think I appreciated the importance of that as much as we see now. I would say this, very few companies that we talk to struggle with a lack of content. You almost never hear someone say that, that, yeah. you know, our intranet is empty or, you know, our inboxes are, <laughs> are just so clean. You know what I mean? That is like, if, if I had a customer that we were talking to say that on a Monday, I would fall out of my chair. It never happens. To Matt's point, it's something that is much deeper, which is how do you give somebody something at the moment that they need it? And, you know, we have a case study on our website with a medical device company, Molnicki, and they talk about this, that they have the sales team. And what they learned with podcasting was that it wasn't about getting someone to listen to a one hour training. It was about getting them the five minutes that they need when they're going in to speak sure. with a physician, that just in time learning concept. And so surfacing something at the right micro moment for that learner, or it could be a communication for that matter, that's really the, the, the critical moment and, and something we're trying to optimize our product for. Yeah, I think that sounds right. And, you know, I mean, in the learning space, you know, the, the buzzword for the last couple of years has been learning in the flow of work. And it's all about how do you get that learning to people in that moment uh, and audio is such a way to introduce learning in the flow of work because it's so easy to do it while you are working, do it and, and not just have something on in the background, like a Joe Rogan, but something that's relevant to that moment. You just pull up your phone and, and listen to this one little bit. Um, or other than that, other than, you know, kind of the discoverability the sharing, all that kind of stuff, how does the technical aspect come into this? Do, do you see with companies? Cause you know, I think, everybody always wants to like polish, polish, polish before they release something. Is that a big differentiator when it comes to podcasting is like audio quality? Do you have to have like super crisp audio quality or is it the, is it mainly the content? It's the content. <laughs> it's yeah. <laughs> you know, if there's one misconception that we try to, to really coach for, we actually were at a trade show in November 
and we had the opportunity to have two of our customers on stage. And we had a, a leader named Jolie, who she's at a, a company called Insurity, who was on stage with us. And her biggest advice to this audience of potential people who were going to bring podcasting and audio into their companies is that it's not about the polish or the microphones or whatever it might be. Yeah. It's about getting yeah. started. And if you have a content vision and you're delivering true value, something that somebody, they wouldn't have got that knowledge if they hadn't been listening to that show, that is the unlock. And it's something that, that was such a light bulb for us because we have so many customers we've talked to since then who, you know, they ask us, do we need to go hire a producer? Do we need to go work with whatever this yeah. might be? And yes, those are things that can optimize your show. And maybe when you hit a certain level of scale, maybe it's worth the investment. But the key thing is finding, does this content fit your audience, right? And, and you can yep. do that from your phone, potentially. You can do that from tools you're already using. It's, it's truly that easy. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I would, I would almost say that, uh, it probably helps you if you start low quality, because if people will listen despite the low quality, then, then you got them. <laughs> it's funny when I, I, I listen to, you know, podcasts that have millions of, of listeners in the, the kind of traditional space. And you sometimes yeah. hear them say stuff like that, like, Oh, remember at the beginning when we, we were, you know, recording using a potato, <laughs> like stuff like that. It's like, that's the thing is that the, the most critical thing I've learned from, from listening to really successful podcasters, not just in the corporate space, but in general, is that it's about frequency and it's about vision. It's yeah. about being able to yeah. build an audience that's like every week, I'm going to get something out of this. And there's really something that they're, they're getting. And if you can do those two things and do it for an extended period of time, you have a shot to be very successful is what I, what I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Well that, that feel, I think th that was great. You just, I, th I feel like you just added a couple more pillars to like what it takes to be successful is like having something that solves the discoverability and shareability problem, but then also having a vision of what you are trying to achieve, the direction you're trying to go and being consistent, you know, like those all feel like pretty critical elements to, to being successful. It's, you know, it's interesting because I love looking at media and, and I mean like things like TV and how TV has evolved because I think yeah. it reflects patterns that we as people and audiences tend to expect. And I think about, you know, you could go back to the 1990s and it was like, you know, uh, NBC just had a total stranglehold on this is comedy night and this is when Seinfeld and these massive shows are going to be on. And it's like you're building an expectation of an audience. And then you fast forward 20 to 30 years to today, and most top podcasters that people listen to, you know exactly when they're going to be releasing content. In fact, we yeah. just had an event, a webinar for Storyboard with uh, Theo Balcom, who's the creator of The Daily, which is one of the most successful podcasts of all time. Their frequency is the name of their show, which is that it's going to be daily. I'm yeah. not saying, you know, for anyone listening, yeah. you need to do it that frequently, which could be a big oh. step. <laughs> Uh, Careful. Yeah, it's it's that's that's a commitment. But I think there is something there of of kind of saying, look, you know, every Tuesday or every other Tuesday, I'm going to interview someone from our sales team and I'm going to teach you something that's going to make you more effective at making a sale or whatever the case may be. I think there's a real power to that. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, yeah, I think that's that's 100 percent right. So for for people who are kind of maybe they haven't thought deeply before about how to use podcasts within their organization. What are some of the more interesting and novel uses that you've seen within companies of, of what they've replaced or what they've augmented? What, what are some of the ways that people have used podcasts? Yeah, it's almost shocking. It's one of the most fun things of doing this when you see how many different yeah. ways people can use something that you, you didn't really anticipate. And you know, I mentioned I'll, I'll kind of start from from the top and narrow this down a little bit. The first big move was seeing Storyboard not as a replacement to like an LMS, something that's really comprehensive and, and widespread, and the companies yeah. have used for a long time. But actually thinking about what are gaps. You know, I, I love the phrase you used before, Matt. You know, I always think about this just in time learning concept. But what are gaps that are happening in the flow of work that people can pick up on? And that starts with why audio matters, right? I think everyone listening probably woke up this morning and checked their inbox. You know, it's a Monday when we're recording and was like, whoa, like there's a lot, there's a yeah. lot there, right? There's so much competition for what we see. And yet 
there's so much less competition for what we're listening to. And so the first thing that we started to see was that companies started to think about the flow of work and how audio could fit into that. That included a sales team, as I mentioned, that was visiting physicians and they were spending 10 to 25 hours per week driving. And those folks in the car, they're already listening to radio, if not podcasts and audiobooks. It was very easy to start building in this kind of uh, snack-based series where you could pick up something new every time you did that drive, basically. That was really neat. And then we started to see other kind of iterations of that, like, for instance, what if you then expanded from snacks, giving something where it could just be one speaker, here's five minutes of an update on something you're not thinking about before, and what if it became kind of interview-focused, almost like you would see in a traditional podcast? Um, we have a, a fast food retail chain that is a team of software engineers, and they started doing, you know, if you think for anyone listening who might be involved with software development, uh, a lot of documentation in software development is pretty technical yes. and, and usually is not very yes. narrative driven. Like you don't get that a whole lot. And it was so cool because, you know, this this person just started interviewing people on their team and saying, you know, we did this big redevelopment of our iPhone app last year. You know, what did we learn from this? And what they've now done is it's not just about giving something to the team that's new. It's almost like a time capsule where now people can actually refer back and learn from that a year or two years down the road by saying, go to Storyboard, listen to this episode. And that would be true of, of any podcast that you build internally. I love that. Uh, yeah. Um, software engineers definitely don't like to document. So if you can find a new way to <laughs> solve their documentation woes, I'm sure they, they would be, they would love it. Um, okay. That's, that's, I like that. Um, so if somebody want, what are some of the common, what are the couple steps that people would need to take, you know, other, other than, other than getting storyboard, if somebody says they want to start an internal podcast, where should they start? So, you know, to, to, to Matt's question, other than working with a product like storyboard, the reality is there are many things you can use to, to start with even tools that you might have internally today. And the thing I always start with is figure out if this is something that, you know, I went back to those two things. Do you have a vision for what kind of content you would do? And can you do it on a repeatable basis? Whether, and that could be weekly, that could be bi-weekly, but on some kind of repeatable basis. And if the answer to those two questions could be yes, make a pilot, try something that, that, that you know, maybe isn't gonna scale. It's not gonna be the thing that it's going to eventually look like. You might need a tool like Storyboard that has the security and the listener experience. And the first thing I always do is just figure out a place to record. And it doesn't need to be anything fancy. We said that before. You might have Teams. You might have Zoom. But if I'm looking, if I'm that software engineer, this is what they did. They just got a couple of engineers together and started recording. And then they took the file and they shared it with a few other people and they got good feedback. And that was enough for them, right? So the first step is don't worry about theme music. Don't worry about having some tight transitions yeah. and things like that. You can yeah. get more complex over time. Figure out a topic and figure out something you can start to build from. And then second, don't build in a vacuum. It's something It's something that I think the, the magic of this is to really expose it to people on your team and see what they think about it. And even if you don't have a software tool like ours today, you probably have a way to at least send the file and get started with that and kind of tell people, here's what I'm thinking about doing and, and here's where I'm thinking about going. And if you're getting good feedback at that point and people are like, wow, this is, this is pretty cool that you're doing this, or even better, if people ask you, can I be on this sometime? That's one of my favorite comments that some of our new podcasters can receive. You, you might be striking yeah. gold. Those are two things I think anyone can start with without spending a dollar beyond their current budget to start to really vet this thing out. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, especially for people in the HR space who maybe aren't as used to thinking in a product mindset, you know, this is definitely the kind of situation where minimum viable product is is the way to go. It's just like, what's that, what's that smallest first thing you can do to try to get feedback and learn and, and, and just get it off the ground? You know, I, I, I am not here to be critical of other types of, of media, but, but I will say this. One of my favorite stories ever, because, you know, I, I think, Matt, your point about this minimum viable product, what is the scrappiest, easiest way that you can actually make something that people can listen to? What a lot of folks don't realize is that you can create a 10 minute block on your calendar, invite somebody to join that Zoom or that Teams call, 
record for 10 minutes, and at minute 11, you have a pilot. You have something that you can actually show yeah. for it. And I, I laugh at this a little bit because we had a team at a pharmaceutical company. They're, they're phenomenal podcasters. They're so much fun to listen to. Uh, they, on their internal podcast, eventually got to interview NBA superstar Shaquille O'Neal. Like they had an amazing journey, Whoa. but it all started very bare bones. It all started very much with just getting together and recording. And what they were struck by was that they had done video for years. And with video, they were used to your lighting has to be right. You need to look a certain way. Yeah. Um, if you screw up and you need to do some editing, they would have to put on the same clothes and do it the next day. And so it was very freeing for them that, you know, this was in the time of, of the of the early pandemic. They could, you know, kind of get out of bed and be in a position where they could actually yeah. do this, which was pretty cool. That's that's so interesting. You just made me think about because I often now that so many podcasts, commercial podcasts are also doing video you know, where Spotify supports video and lots of people drop their podcasts on YouTube. I often think about, you, you just made me think about what effect that could have on podcasting as a medium, if any, maybe most people won't care. Um, but reintroducing the visual aspect, uh, that, that's that's an interesting just like kind of thought experiment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So um, anything else to like, you know, I asked you, what, what haven't we covered that you would love people to know about about the importance of podcasting within an organization? You know, anything I think we, we, we captured a lot of these themes, but, you know, I think the biggest thing that I, I've I've taken away, not just talking to what I would describe as creators, people who are introducing a podcast to a company, but it's all about building an audience, right? It isn't almost what yeah. anyone does if you're working and trying to build a, a learning curriculum and connect with people, what do you want? You, you want to impact people. You want to get in the flow of the way people work and help them optimize. Uh, and this could even extend to things like professional development. You know, we think about this in the era of the great resignation and all of these different pieces. What can we do to keep people motivated and fired up about growing at the company that they're at? And I think that's been really fun to see these really creative learning leaders and other communicators and leaders at companies Think about their audience and think about that those moments of just being away from your desk and taking out your phone and learning about, okay, I'm thinking about becoming a manager. What are skill sets that I need in order to get there? Those are often the coolest series that I think we've seen on Storyboard that have been the most successful. So, you know, whether you're replacing something you already do that you're like, this could be a podcast, people could listen to it. That's a great way to do that thought exercise. But I think another thing you can do is to think about what are these well known gaps where just being able to listen, you could really connect with people and help make them feel better informed about that topic. And that's another good, very fertile ground for figuring out some great ways to build an internal podcast and reaching that 100 people at your company that you're really trying to get to, if that makes some sense. No, it totally does. Yeah, I definitely think this is like, this is the ultimate. It's not, you know, either or, it's and also. You know, it's I'm I'm a huge believer in the medium. Feel like there's tons of space there for augmenting existing products as well as exist, you know, replacing some existing products. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm totally down with what you with, with what you're saying. Really excited about what you're doing. You know, I'm I'm a deep believer that five years from now, no learning strategy will be complete without some element of audio to it. Um, so thank you so much for, for being here. Um, got a lot of the discussion. Hopefully some other people did well, did as well. Um, thank, thanks a lot. Thanks, thanks for having me, Matt.